Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Busted, bold and beautiful baddie accidentally reveals they're the one who killed poor Tom. There was a lot of suspicious activity going on the night that Tom Starr's electric blue sports drink was poisoned on the bold and the beautiful. Heck, rare appearances by Jack Finnegan and Justin Barber alone were enough to raise our eyebrows, so high, they wound up on the back of our head. But one character behaved in a way that was so telltale, she might as well have yelled, I did it. I poisoned him, while everyone else was calling for an encore. We don't mean Poppy, either, we mean her sister, Lee. She showed up in her hospital scrubs to pick up takeout, she told ex-husband Jack. But rather than grab her food and go, she stuck around for the entire show. So whatever happened to Lee's pizza? Perhaps she'd never placed an order at all, huh? Perhaps she wasn't there for the grub, but to ensure that Tom didn't get anyone interested in retesting Luna's paternity and potentially revealing a dirty family secret that she really, really wants to remain a secret. You know the one. And if you don't, this is it. What's more, when Tom keeled over following his performance, Lay did nothing to help him. There was a doctor in the house, and she did nada. Why? Columbo style, we posit that she disregarded the Hippocratic oath that she took because she had already taken pains to ensure that Tom's first show at Il Giardino would also be his last. That was also why she didn't sneak out after poisoning his drink. She wanted to be 100% positive that she'd accomplished her deadly goal. The opulent, marble-floored foyer of Forrester Creations buzzed with the usual hum of gossip and anticipation. Models sashayed past, designers scurried about, and the scent of expensive perfume mingled with the fresh-cut flowers that adorned every corner. Amidst this glamorous chaos, an undercurrent of tension rippled through the air, a tension that had been festering ever since Tom Forrester's untimely death. Tom, the beloved scion of the Forrester family, had been found dead in his studio, his latest designs strewn about like a macabre final exhibit. His passing had sent shockwaves through the family and the fashion world. Rumors swirled, suspicions brewed, but no one could fathom who would want Tom dead. Until now. In a corner office, hidden behind the thick mahogany door, Quinn Fuller paced. Her high heels clicked rhythmically against the polished floor, a stark contrast to the turmoil in her mind. She had always been a master of manipulation, a puppeteer pulling strings from the shadows. But this time, she had outdone herself, or so she thought. Quinn, you need to calm down, whispered Shauna Fulton, her best friend and confident, who sat perched on the edge of Quinn's sleek black leather couch. You're going to give yourself away. Quinn shot her a look of pure venom. Easy for you to say. You're not the one with blood on your hands. Shauna's eyes widened and she glanced nervously at the door. Quinn, you need to be careful. If anyone hears, nobody will hear, Quinn snapped her voice a harsh whisper, as long as you keep your mouth shut. Across town, at the Forrester mansion, the atmosphere was equally charged. Ridge Forrester stood by the fireplace, staring into the flames as if they held the answers he so desperately sought. His daughter, Sephi, sat on the couch, her face a mask of grief and determination, we have to find out who did this, Steffi said, her voice trembling with emotion. Tom deserves justice. Ridge nodded, his jaw clenched. We will, Steffi. I promise you, we will. At that moment, Brooke Logan entered the room, her expression a mix of sadness and resolve. Ridge, I just got off the phone with the police. They have a new lead. Ridge turned to her, hope flickering in his eyes. What did they say? Brooke hesitated, glancing at Steffi. They found a piece of fabric near Tom's body. It matches the design of a dress from the new collection. Steffi's eyes widened, but only a handful of people had access to that collection. Ridge's mind raced. Whoever did this must have been someone close. Someone who knew Tom's schedule, his routines. Brooke placed a comforting hand on Ridge's arm. We'll find them, Ridge. We have to. Back at Forrester Creations, Quinn's agitation was reaching a boiling point. 
She couldn't shake the feeling that her carefully constructed facade was crumbling, and then, in a moment of sheer panic, she made a mistake. During a heated conversation with Eric Forrester, her husband and the patriarch of the Forrester family, Quinn's mask slipped. Eric, you have to believe me, I had nothing to do with Tom's death. She pleaded, her voice tinged with desperation. Eric's eyes narrowed. Quinn, why are you so defensive? I never said you were involved. Realizing her blunder, Quinn tried to backtrack. I, I just mean, people are talking. They're pointing fingers and I'm worried. Eric's gaze softened, but suspicion lingered in his eyes. Quinn, if there's something you're not telling me, now is the time to come clean. Before Quinn could respond, the door burst open and Steffi stormed in, followed by Ridge and Brooke. Dad, we need to talk, Steffi said urgently. She paused, noticing Quinn's pallor. What's going on here? Eric shook his head, trying to dismiss the tension. Nothing, Steffi, just a misunderstanding. But Steffi wasn't convinced. Her eyes darted between her father and Quinn, sensing the unease. Quinn, you seem awfully jumpy. Is there something you want to share with the class? Quinn forced a laugh, but it sounded hollow. Of course not, Steffi. I'm just worried about Tom, like everyone else. Ridge stepped forward, his gaze piercing, worried enough to make a mistake. Quinn's breath caught in her throat. What are you implying, Ridge? Brooke, ever the peacemaker, tried to intervene. Let's not jump to conclusions. We need facts, not accusations. But Ridge wasn't backing down. Quinn, where were you the night? Tom died. Quinn hesitated, and in that moment, everyone in the room knew. Her silence spoke louder than any words could. Stefa's eyes blazed with fury. You did it, didn't you? You killed Tom. Quinn's composure shattered. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. He found out about... About what? Ridge demanded. Quinn's voice broke. About everything. The sabotage, the lies. I just wanted to protect myself. I never meant for it to go this far. Eric looked like he'd been struck. Quinn, how could you? Tears streamed down Quinn's face. I'm so sorry, I never wanted this. But it was too late. The truth was out and there was no going back. The room fell into a stunned silence, the weight of Quinn's confession hanging heavy in the air. As the police were called and Quinn was taken into custody, the Forrester family was left to pick up the pieces. Tom's death had been a senseless tragedy, a ripple effect of Quinn's schemes and deceit, and though justice would be served, the scars of that night would remain forever etched in their hearts. In the days that followed, the Forrester family tried to find a semblance of normalcy, but the loss of Tom and the betrayal by Quinn had changed them all. They were stronger, more united, but also more wary. They had seen firsthand the darkness that could lurk behind even the most beautiful of facades. And as they moved forward, they vowed never to let their guard down again. Because in the world of fashion, where glamour and deception often walked hand in hand, they had learned that trust was the most precious commodity of all.